We've got a few jobs to do this morning. I think we need to uh, put some decorators coke around this light socket and then paint the wall, do a little bit of cutting in. What do you reckon? Yeah, definitely needs a little bit of work on it. Anyway, that can wait for another day. Off to the brewery we go. Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. So today's job is to mount this TV monitor. This is what came out of the pub when we replaced it with a bigger one. So basically what happened, what happened was, uh, Stuart's a big rugby fan. I prefer rugby to football massively. So uh, we decided, they're the wrong side bolts. We decided that if we're going to show any sports in the pub, then the ones to show would of course be rugby. So uh, we were showing it in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we put on the Six Nations, but this TV ain't all that big to be honest. So people couldn't see the bugger. So we've been out and bought a 58 inch, and that means that this one is now no longer required in the pub. So I've pinched it and we're putting it up on the wall in order for us to view the tilts live as they're in the tanks. So we can track their broad progress, broadcast. <laughs> They'll broadcast their progress and we can track that on a daily basis, meaning we'll know when to dry hop and uh, when to cold crash. We're going to be harvesting yeast as well. Okay, that might be a little bit too long, those buggers. So yeah, we need to really know when to do these things. So we can, uh, oh my goodness, it looks like it's just lost the nut on the inside. Bugger. Anyway, that's the idea, but we might not get there now because I'm going to have to take the back off this freaking television because the nut's just dropped off. That's unbelievable. Anyway, I'll be back in 10 minutes when I've fixed this bloody problem. I didn't see that coming this morning. Well, so here's what's happened, folks. It looks like this little segment here has broken off the back of here. Now there's a screw and a little fitting that holds all that together, but it looks like it snapped away. So what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and we'll just stick the, uh, the required bolt. Oh my god, I should have prepped this before I started the camera rolling. So we'll stick the bolt in there and in there and I haven't even got the right screwdriver. And if we put that on there now, then I think we can kind of wing it. There we go. Got it on. Got to put this back together now. In Juan Pes. Juan Peso. And uh, come here, lad. That little screw went in there. Just like that, and then all these go around in the sides. Make sure it's all lined up. And we've got to screw it all back together. So, as I was saying, I'm going to put this mount on, then we're going to hang this TV up in the rafters, and then we will be able to view the tilts live the gravities and temperatures in the tanks as broadcast by the tilt and we can correlate that with the temperatures being displayed on the STCs and the gravity that we read from the hydrometer to keep track of everything 
and then we know when to cold crush to harvest yeast, when to dry hop, all the rest of it. So I think it's going to save us a lot of money. Might take a while for all these tilts to pay for themselves, but considering that a 500 gram packet of yeast now costs around 60 quid for um, Nottingham Ale yeast, and I have got some of the Trent Ale yeast from uh, whoever it is that's making it. Very similar, but I really I trust the brand names for yeast. If one batch was to fail, that's a lot of money down the drain. So that's why when I'm harvesting the yeast in the future, I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. We'll look into that at the time anyway. I'm not going to discuss it here. But considering that it's around 60 quid per packet and you get two brews out of a packet, two 500 litre brews out of a packet, all we need to do is harvest the yeast from four batches and that will recover around 120 quid which means it's paid for the tilt. So if we get four batches of harvested yeast out of each tank then the tilts are paid for. That's the way I'm looking at it. That's what we're going to try and achieve. Anyway, let's get on with putting this monitor up on the wall and we'll talk a little bit more about how the tilts are going to communicate to this as well as send their data to the cloud and Google Docs so we can of course track the fermentation progress anywhere in the world by opening these Google Documents spreadsheets and you can see with a 15 minute delay exactly what your fermenters are doing. To be fair, I don't need real time at home, but it's nice to have real time uh, fermentation displayed in the brewery. So for those of you who are familiar with the um, tilt, you probably know this anyway, but for those of you who aren't, uh, this is what we're operating the tilt on. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. They're pretty cheap, I think less than 20 quid. And in that we have a 16 gig uh, micro SD card. You can get away with an 8. I just had to have, happen to have a 16 gig line around. And what you're going to do is flash the image onto this card using a program called Etcher. The image is available on the Tilt Hydrometer website. If you're going to be using it in conjunction with a monitor like I am, then you need the HDMI version, which has a graphics user interface, which ports out at this H mini HDMI uh, outlet there, terminal. So for that, I've got a mini HDMI cable and that connects up to, on the other end, a regular HDMI. I actually ordered a 5 meter one because I didn't know where I was going to sight the um, monitor. But it's a bit overkill, I'm going to end up with half of that tied up. And then to power the whole thing, I've got this uh, 2.5 amp adapter from the Pi Hut, where I bought the Raspberry Pi from. And that also comes with a little on and off switch here anyway. I could have wired it in with an LED driver or something like that, but at least I know this power supply is going to be stable at 2.5 amps, which is what this is going to need to be driven. And then also, uh, this version of the Raspberry Pi has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So when you get the package installed onto the SD card, you're going to open a file called HTML Setup, or setup.html and that will open up in Chrome and it will allow you to put in your Wi-Fi password and uh, ID code for the router and then also when you turn it on, this is one thing I learned, you need to set up a colour tilt with it and have that tilt turned on when you power the Raspberry Pi up otherwise it won't send the details out to you correctly. But once it's done it's pretty simple uh, I did spend a little bit of time yesterday going into um, into the setup of Raspbian, which is the uh, um, the driver, the Linux driver, if you like, for the Raspberry Pi, because I wanted to change the uh, the screen ratio 
the output for the for the TV screen so we've got all eight tilts displayed on there because it was needing to scroll down to get all eight tilts uh, that was pretty easy to do actually but I did have to go onto the Raspberry Pi website to find instructions there as that's not available on the tilt hydrometer website but it was simple enough just a few uh, little commands to run and you can get there and all the options are there as well so you can go for 1080 720 and so on for the screen resolutions so this should power up now when we plug it in and that monitor that we've just installed up on oh well you can't see it but you will in a second it is out there uh, we will go out and have a look so yeah any second now I'm gonna go up these ladders and you can see where the monitors mounted I did have to run another cable across because the power supply for the monitor only has a short lead but that just means that everything now is going to be powered quite close to the monitor and then hopefully the angle on that's good enough so we can see it from uh, wherever we are in the brewery so fingers crossed fingers crossed this should work for us let's check it out so it takes a while for it to boot up so you'll see a few of the raspberry pi icons there's one in the corner look so that means that's working and we've just got to hope it picks up all the tilts and uh, grabs a Wi-Fi signal yeah there's a little icon in the top corner the top left corner there I think we're good to go bingo so there's tilt that seems to have booted up so far no problems I can see the light on the Raspberry Pi flashing away still in that little box. I don't know if you can see it there. Shouldn't be far away. Should go to a black screen and then load. There we go. Tilt dashboard. We're getting closer. So that previous screen was just the Raspberry Pi home page and obviously uh, it had the tilt logo on there instead of the raspberry pi logo which can be changed if you so desire is this success or failure it looks like success to me boom there we go so we've got four tilts live and in action. I do have a green one here in my hand so if I kind of activate that which is that way it was upside down then we should see the green tilt pop up on there any minute now oh there we go there's green, did we lose orange? We may have lost a bit of a signal, we've got two reds. So it's not happy about something, but we're 90% of the way there. So we just have to do a little bit of tweaking. I don't know why it's picked up two reds. Uh, must be a... And the yellow. It's just waiting, it's got to get through these tanks. I think it's just mirrored the red signal. Anyway, there we go. We'll just leave it for half an hour and let it settle out and then, uh, you know, we'll come back and see if it's actually sorted its little brain out a little bit more. But yeah, so far, so good. I'm pleased with that. The main event is, of course, getting the television screen up there with the tilts broadcasting on it. So yeah, I'm happy with that. There she is folks. All the beer names are on there now. And uh, all the colours that we've got active. There are two more colours, but they're obviously not in tanks at the moment. And uh, it's all working pretty flawlessly. Thank you very much. So, 
I'm just going to walk into the workshop. I've just had a little delivery, completely uh, out of the blue, not something that I've ordered. Uh, and it's, <laughs> wouldn't you know, arrived just a few minutes late because I've just finished that job. But these are Raspberry Pi Zero cases that somebody sent me. I think they're 3D printed, I'm not sure. But thank you very much, Squire. There's no note in there, so I can't tell you it's from. Aha! There we go. Sneaky Linux. Thank you very much, Sneaky Linux. So, uh, the next time I'm up there, I'll pop a case on that Raspberry Pi Zero. And uh, we've got one spare as well for another project. Excellent.